We're Trent and Allie, and our dream of building a cabin in the mountains of Utah is slowly becoming a reality. Construction is full of unexpected issues, and what we thought would be an easy installation of our new septic system... That was the drop right there. What? That is in the middle, my friend. Right on the dollar turned into a way bigger project. We thought that today the septic system would be installed, inspected, and we'd move on to the next piece of the puzzle. We honestly thought we were wrapping up our septic today. It's been a day of high highs. We just got accepted! No way! Yes! <laughs> and low lows. Is this your heaven, Trent? No, this is my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video every Monday and Friday. And come along today as we overcome the obstacles of building in the mountains. It's not a laughing matter, but Allie <laughs> thinks it's funny. Are you being a good boy? Are you ready for breakfast? <sighs> good morning, guys. I'm gonna feed Frank here in just a second, don't worry. We've got a pretty big day planned today. We're heading up to the property. We're gonna be doing some work up there today. We've got some important planning. I think there's been a lot of progress made. If you missed our last video where we headed to Southern Utah and I got to help frame a different cabin, you better go back and watch that one because that was a really good one. We also took Terry on her maiden voyage and she did absolutely terrible. But now we're back here, everything is back in order and we're ready to head up and get to work soon as I can get this lazy munchkin out of bed. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> Let's get some coffee going, we're gonna have some breakfast, and then we're gonna hit the road. Could be better, could be worse. Hopefully Ellie's happy with it. All right guys, before we get started and hit the road today, I do need to have some breakfast. Now, you guys know me. I love pastries, I love cookies. One of the things that I grew up on was cereal. Breakfast cereal in the morning has always been super delicious and that brings me to today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. It does taste like a lot of the breakfast cereals that you had when you were a kid, but this stuff is actually super healthy. This is basically a protein shake in a bowl of cereal. If you really want to indulge in guilt-free delicious cereal every morning, Magic Spoon is the way to go. For $1.25 a bowl, it's literally the cheapest, easiest, healthiest thing you can eat in the morning. Magic Spoon has four different flavors. They make fruity, blueberry, Berry, cocoa, and frosted. They're all high protein, low carb, and zero sugar. So if you guys wanna try a delicious breakfast cereal that will remind you of being a kid, go ahead, click the link in our description to try Magic Spoon today, and use code TRENTALLY to get a four pack variety box with free shipping. Now I'm gonna dig in, I'm gonna eat this cereal, and we're heading up to the property. Oh! What? We got it! Got what? We just got accepted! No way! Yes! <laughs> We've been waiting for the permit for structure number two and it just barely came through and everybody and their dog has basically told us that they always have comments. It's never accepted on the first go around. This was accepted on the first go around. This is perfect timing. Everything's falling into place. I'm super happy. Such a relief. It's like happening. This is like the last step and now it's really <laughs> happening. Traveling through Central and South America for the past year and a half was a struggle. It was a challenge. We weren't super fluent in the language. There was all these different things you have to do at every different country. So Ali and myself are no stranger to jumping through bureaucratical hoops. But one thing that we've come to realize is that when you're dealing with the county and you have to be getting permits and doing all type of stuff like that for your property, I can't remember, is it Zootopia? Is yes, that the show the where, where the sloth <laughs> is like the DMV person? And it's like, just one moment it like <laughs> takes 35 seconds for them to pick up a piece of paper anyway i'm not complaining i'm super happy that we finally got the plans approved everything's set to go it's all falling into place <sighs> let's go drop frank off at doggy daycare <laughs> aka grandma's house right inside and get heading up to the property This over here is actually a place where there was a fire recently. There was some like 1,500 acres on fire just a couple days ago. I don't know what it's up to now. I know it was only like 7% contained when I saw it on the news. 
it's just really scary. There is uh, obviously a lot of houses around here and it hasn't rained for a long time. We actually just got a notification on our phones. I'm part of a community alert group and we are in a red flag warning where our property is located up a little bit more north as well. It's just so dry and windy today and with it being 95, 97 degrees Fahrenheit, any, it's, it's, everything is just like ready to burn. So, as you guys know, we have to drive for about two and a half hours to get from my mom's house where we're currently staying up to the property. Not only does this take quite a bit of time, but it takes a lot of fuel. So we're trying to get the trailer up here as soon as possible. We're actually contemplating moving the trailer up to my grandparents' house, which is only about an hour away from the property. We can live out in front of their house, but because of coronavirus, we have to stay away from them. So it's just kind of a, it's a predicament that we're in. Oh, I see Kevin and Curtis. Woo! People are up here making things happen. Look at this guy moving. Progress, progress, progress. Let's go see what we're doing today. The gray water that comes out. Right. So it's a mixture. So everything else is supposed to settle in your tank. So it's just the water that's supposed to come out, a mixture of all the, everything that breaks down. We're basically designing the septic system here. They need to put in a couple of different lines and a bunch of junction boxes. This giant concrete box over here. That's where all of our sewage is gonna go. Kind of gross, but I'm very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty intense. This is like something that has to be down to a specific science and we're trying to like kind of spitball and make some changes. The only thing that they can adjust is the length of these leach fields and it's required <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's required that we have a specific length of leach fields in order to let everything dissipate into the ground. Everything was planned out and engineered so that it would all fit on our little property, but we've run into the issue of wanting more parking space because we want visitors, we want friends to be able to come up and hang out. Terry needs a home. Terry needs a place to sit. So we're trying right now to figure out a way to, to engineer, to construct the septic tank without eating away at our extra parking that we've created that wasn't on the original plan, that's a little bit of a nightmare. Hopefully everything's gonna work out. I got trust in these guys. They're professionals. I'm gonna gig this sucker out. Right there, Chad, how many feet you got? This has been a very long process, as you guys know. Just getting the land took a long time. The permits took a long time. Construction is moving slowly as expected and that's totally fine. We're okay with that. We keep trying not to give ourselves strict timelines and parameters of when things need to be done because inevitably it gets delayed and then you just get disappointed. So we've been thinking, okay, you know, it's gonna be a few more weeks until we're ready to start framing, to take over. But just now, Kevin said that he needs to order lumber because in two weeks, we're ready to frame. That came out of Kevin's mouth. Honestly, I'm really scared though. <laughs> we just spent a few days framing another cabin. Physically, it seems very high consequence and just very scary. So I'm trying to mentally prepare myself because I guess in two weeks, we're gonna be ready. <laughs> Curtis is putting in the leach fields for the septic system. Everything is looking super sharp. I'm really excited to see. He's got an inspection scheduled tomorrow at 1.30, so he's probably gonna get the majority, if not all, of the septic system finished today. I'm super stoked on that. We are actually heading down into town where we've got good cell phone service because we have to get on a phone call with the people that are gonna be making our windows. We're partnering with a company that makes the most highest performance window in the country. Let's just say we need some really good windows to be up here in the winter time and keep the house warm. How's your day going? All right, right now? catching me in the car. There you go, burritos, you're good to go. It's lunchtime. <laughs> Yeah, appreciate it, Greg. Thanks, Greg. All right, happy filming. Thanks. See you, bye. Bye. <laughs>
We had to make a quick stop in here at Home Depot because we need to get at least one ladder and probably like seven ladders. <laughs> Today we're just getting one. This is a little bit different type of septic system than I am familiar with. But basically, this big black tube right here is shaped like a little dome, and underneath is a big open cavity. Now, there's grates and vents on here and on the top. So basically, after the water goes into the septic tank, there's an inlet and an outlet. Water goes in, all the sewage goes in, it fills up to a certain point, and then water, basically gray water and liquids, is allowed to flow out of the septic tank. From there, it goes into the leach field. It gets spread through 250 feet of this black dome pipe where it seeps into the ground and those grates allow the gases to escape. It's pretty sophisticated. <laughs> this guy's just instructed me that I've got to hold the smart end of the tape measure and he's going to take the dumb end. The smart end is the end you read. <laughs> so we need to get at least 45 feet out of this run for the septic. I'm going to figure it out. While we live here, I'm going to figure out how to repel the flies because it's getting to be that time of year. I have about nine flies that are intermittently landing on me. They don't bite. They just like tickle you and it makes me want to freak out. I will be your first and longest customer. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> To the end cap? Yeah. 45 feet. Right on the money. Who knew installing a septic system was like real life Tetris? So precise. Very dude. precise. So they ran all the lines for the leach field. They've pretty much dug out the whole septic system. The very last part that Curtis is just about to finish up is actually placing the septic tank up high up on a property because this is all a gravity fed system. It's been a very uh, constructive day here. A constructive day of construction. All right, guys, the moment is here. We've been up here digging and working and going crazy all day. We have another giant pile of dirt. It seems like we're just literally playing in a giant sandbox. So this right here is the hole that the septic tank is gonna go inside. And then when water runs in there and runs out, it's gonna go to all those leach fields that we just put in. Legend, Curtis. We have a septic system, guys. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you set a septic system, oh, or at least so a septic excited. tank. <laughs> I think we're gonna take off for today. We'll see you guys in the morning. What's up, guys? Good morning. As you guys probably just barely got done watching, Curtis got the septic tank installed yesterday. He got all the leach fields put in. This morning, he's going up there. He's gonna finish putting in the rest of the pipes and he's got an inspection at 1.30. We have to head back up there because we're gonna be there for the inspection. We're gonna film it and make sure everything goes smooth. We also need to go back up Wednesday and we're probably gonna go back up another day this week. And to be entirely honest with you, driving for five hours in a day is a struggle. It doesn't really matter where you are. Five hours of driving and seven hours of working is just absolutely ridiculous and I don't wish that on anyone. Last night we got home at 11 p.m. Now it's 7.30 a.m. We are up and ready to go. And we're thinking to ourselves, how do we avoid having to do this drive five times this week? And the solution is obvious. We're taking Terry to Terry's. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but Terry is my grandmother's name, and they only live about an hour away from our property. So, 
This morning, we're gonna be towing Terry up to Grandma Terry's house and parking it in front of Terry's house, and then we're gonna drive up to the property, so we only gotta go back and forth for one hour. Frank, are you ready to go to Grandma's house? <gasps> Yes. yes, you are. Yes, you are. He loves Grandma's house because Grandpa feeds him things when he's not supposed yes. to. Yes. <laughs> I think all Grandpas do that. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm great. Are you home right now? Yes, I'm home all the time, 24 hours a day. <laughs> We're going to bring Terry over to your house and park it in front of the house, and then we can go up to the property and come back, and uh, we'll get to see you for a few days. Okay, that'll be wonderful. Okay. We're, uh, we We're in the middle of the valley, so we'll probably be there maybe like 15 minutes. Okay, honey. Okay, we'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's my grandpa. He's 90 years old, and he just got done mowing the lawn. Literally the hardest working man I've ever met in my life. Hi, darling. Hi. What just, is this? Just came in the mail. Oh, thank you. It's wonderful. It's wonderful? Something to look at. <laughs> well, let's see. Which one would you like to trade? <laughs> We'll probably only be here for like a week, but... A week? A week. That's yeah. a long time. I charge. Okay. <laughs> if you use the toilet, it costs you a dollar. Shower, it costs you two dollars. Okay. If you eat, it costs you four dollars. And if you bark it, it costs you five dollars a day. That's She's free. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay. I'll just give you 20 bucks now and we'll call it even. <laughs> might do that. <laughs> <laughs> if I haven't said it before, Trent's Graham and Grandpa are the cutest people I've ever met. I absolutely adore them. They have been incredible grandparents to Trent and to me as well, honestly. We feel really good about leaving Terry with Terry and Frank is gonna hang out there as well. Now we have to get up to the property. It's almost noon and big things are happening today. Terry, my grandma, is actually the watchdog of the neighborhood. She makes sure Nothing fishy is going on in the neighborhood. There's not anybody out doing anything suspicious, so I know leaving Terry in front of her house is a good idea because she'll make sure everything stays safe. With Terry the trailer. With Terry the trailer. So Terry is gonna be safe with Terry, and Trent and Allie are gonna be heading up to the property. <laughs> we gotta get up there in time for this septic system inspection. Let's get going. On today's episode of Trent and Allie Get Lost in Their Own Neighborhood, we're taking a different road today. It's the same road we took last time when we got lost. It's very <laughs> washboarded, if you couldn't tell by the truck shaking to death. And I'm gonna take the other fork, because there's a fork, and I think I just went the wrong way, so we're gonna take the... The, the other, fork less traveled. We're gonna take the fork less traveled, and I think that will lead us to our property. <laughs> My seatbelt has been malfunctioning lately, and it just locks. I know we're on a bumpy road, so that's why it's locking right now, but it'll lock when I'm just driving down the road and I can't get it to unlock. Very, very annoying. I'm about ready to buy a new seatbelt. You know what we call that, Trent? Being frustrated. That's a first world problem right there. <laughs> <laughs> My seatbelt's too tight, and I'm gonna have a conniption fit. <laughs> so this right here is the watchtower for the entire property. You're the real life king of the hill. I am the real life king of the hill. This is my castle. <laughs> and we're filling up the septic tank. It's something that you have to do in order to inspect the septic tank is you have to fill it up and make sure that water is going in, going out, not leaking out the side of the septic tank, and that it's going evenly to all the different leach fields. So as you guys saw yesterday, we got the septic tank set right here. These are the little manhole covers that are on the top. Hi -ya. And maybe you can see it in there, maybe you can't. But it's filling up with water, and the water's crystal clean. It's hot enough out here that I'm about to jump in this water right now. <laughs> <laughs> Allie wants to jump in there and take a swim. Especially before it gets dirty, it's nice and clean right now. Yeah, after uh, living in here for about a month, you're not gonna wanna get in yeah. there. <laughs> so basically, there's an inlet, there's an outlet, and then this giant concrete box is like a big old bathtub. Right now it's just full of water, but in the future there's gonna be a lot of other stuff in there. <laughs> 
So basically when the water comes in this pipe right here, it hits a T. So you got things that float, you got things that sink, and you got all the water in the middle. So as this tank fills up, the outlet has a T on it as well. It's got a pipe that goes straight down and a pipe that goes out into a junction box. So the pipe that goes straight down, it stops all the things that sink and all the things that float from coming through the pipe. So anything that floats is, a, is below the T at the top, anything that sinks is down on the floor, and this pipe is in the middle. So all that water can flow up the pipe and then go out of the septic tank. Now in your septic tank, it's basically a giant battlefield full of bacteria and enzymes and all different things that are breaking down food and waste and anything else that ends up in the septic tank. Now if your septic tank is sized properly, you should pretty much never have to empty it because it should biodegrade, bacteria should eat everything, enzymes should eat everything. Everything should basically turn into liquid over time and that liquid goes out the outlet and then it comes down here. So this is the junction box here. It's basically gonna have the water that trickles out of the septic tank come into this little box which is set completely level. Now there's one, two, three, four, and five different pipes on this junction box. So as the water fills up into here, it's gonna disperse evenly into five different pipes. You guessed right, one pipe goes to each leach field and they're all gonna be dispersed and water's gonna go equally into each different area. So as the level increases, a little bit of water is gonna go into all five pipes simultaneously. It's gonna spread out through this entire area and everything's gonna be A-OK. -okay. Mission accomplished. Curtis, the excavator slash pipe layer slash man of all trades has done it again. A perfect septic system install and we couldn't be happier. You know, things don't always go as smoothly as you plan for them to go. We thought the septic would be inspected, installed, no worries today. We're running into a couple issues, one of which is that I have to drag this hose up this slope. Why don't we take this in? It could be better, it could be worse, and we're dealing with it. Construction is a process and it's full of unexpected issues. We thought that today the septic system would be installed, inspected, and we'd move on to the next piece of the puzzle. We honestly thought we were wrapping up our septic today. We ran into a little problem though. Everything was draining into the junction box just fine, but we didn't have the proper level on the actual septic tank. I think overnight it settled and it had a little bit of a back slope, which means when the water comes in, it would be backing up right there. And without a doubt, there'd be problems in the future. So we're having to drain 1,250 gallons of water, reset the tank <laughs> and fill it back up. And All our we... hoses are this big around. And we don't even have a pump. All we can do is siphon the water. So we've got two hoses coming out of it right now. We're going to all the neighbors and asking if they've got hoses we can borrow. It's not a laughing matter, but Allie <laughs> thinks it's funny. So we actually have some new neighbors up here, Tim and Therese that we've met, and they are some super awesome people. Not only did they offer to let us borrow some hoses because we went over there because we're trying to get more hoses to get water out of the septic tank quicker, Therese greeted us with these little pudding pops, which are absolutely amazing because it's freaking hot today. Also, they called Diamond Reynolds and figured out that it's only like 30 bucks for us to go rent a pump that'll evacuate the septic tank in like five minutes. So we're heading down to Diamond Reynolds now. Tim and Therese, the real MVPs of today. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. We need a pump that can evacuate water out of a septic tank. Yeah, I'll set up here never. Is this your heaven, Trent? No, this is my nightmare. <laughs> Hopefully uh, we can carry this pump up to the septic tank really easily. It looks pretty heavy. Uh, get it started quickly and don't have any problems. It 
has not gone as expected today. It's almost quitting time. We're not quitting though until we get this water out of this tank. Day. How's it feel to drive up and down your driveway? Uh, it's pretty <laughs> exhilarating, I'm gonna be honest. I'm <sighs> really happy about being able to drive up my driveway, to be completely honest. It just goes to show that you gotta roll with the punches, basically. We totally expected a different outcome for today, a totally different video, and it ended up being a lot of fun. At least for me, I don't know if Trent had fun or not. We made it back to Diamond Rentals. We got the trash pump dropped off just in the nick of time. They even stayed till like 5.05 .05 just so that we could check that piece of machinery back in. Big deal because in the morning, I'm going to my least favorite place in the world, the freaking dentist. So I wasn't gonna be able to come back and return that pump until later in the day and they probably would have charged me more. So I'm glad we got that taken care of. Now we got a short, probably 45 minute drive. Wherever we go, we can never get away from sprinklers. That is, that is always gonna be the one constant in living trailer life. But the one huge perk of coming up to Trent's grandparents' house is we get to eat sushi for the first time in <laughs> such a long time. Our favorite sushi restaurant is here in the valley, not in the country. We've had very limited restaurant options, which is totally fine, especially during coronavirus, and we like to cook anyway, but we are about to splurge tonight. I'm very excited. <sighs> it's gonna it's be delicious. It's only 96 degrees inside the trailer. Oh my gosh. It doesn't even feel that bad. <laughs> That's how I used to being extremely hot I am. <sighs> I have like a stomach ache because I like have only drank and haven't eaten and I just... I'm... You sure it's not from the stress of today? It's mostly from the stress. We had a really stressful day. I think we got everything figured out with the septic tank. We had to leave everything in our contractor's hands, in Curtis's hands, to fix the septic tank. We pumped all the water out. He's gonna re-level it in the morning. I got faith in him. Still gonna try and double check it. We're not going back until tomorrow, at least after my my dentist appointment. We hope you guys had a fun time coming along on this adventure, probably learning something about a septic tank, unless yeah. you're already versed and you've put one in or know a lot what about them. What to do and what not to do. Yeah. Don't set it in until it's super level. Well, make sure you level it before you fill it up. That's yeah. the moral of the story. Yeah, seriously. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to Trent and Allie if you haven't already. Make sure you click the notification bell so that you get notified every time we post a video. Thank you again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description to check them out. And we will see you guys on the next Adios. one. Adios. We know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright.